So I am honoured to be joined today by Danny Rowe, a former GB road and track cyclist, Olympic gold medalist, world-class athlete and MBE. It was the 2012 Summer Olympics when Danny won a gold medal in the team pursuit. Her team set a new world record time and she was part of one of the most successful Olympic team performances in history. Danny has also won three world titles and numerous European and British medals. She's one of the most successful British cyclists of all time and was very deservingly appointed an MBE in the 2013 New Year Honours for her incredible services to cycling. However, since retirement, Danny has been as busy as ever, continuing to work to promote cycling and to encourage others, particularly women, to partake in sport. Founder of Rowan King, Danny's cycling coaching company, set up in 2015. She is dedicated to working and coaching with all cyclists of any experience level, from the most amateur to the elite. Danny is truly an inspiring woman, and I'm so grateful that she's on our podcast to chat about her new life venture of becoming a mum. Hey, welcome, thank Danny, you for and thank me. you. <laughs> no, it's Thanks brilliant. for having me. That was a very nice introduction. <laughs> <laughs> all true, all true. <laughs> so, how has pregnancy and your journey so far been? Um, it's been really good, actually. I feel very grateful to have, I guess, a relatively straightforward pregnancy. Um, I felt really fit and healthy um, throughout, and I've been able to remain active which is so so important to me obviously spending a lot of my life um, being so active and, and being an athlete essentially um, but yeah it was I found out in January that I was pregnant I was really really excited um, it actually took quite a lot longer to get pregnant for myself than I was hoping so it almost made it even more sweeter when I found out that I was pregnant um yeah we've only got six weeks to go which is crazy it's gone so fast even you know through this strange time of, of covid which we've all found ourselves in at the moment um but we are very excited oh that's amazing and yeah like you say with everything with covid and lockdown it almost feels like those those weeks and months feel like years and years don't they but I'm sure you've been able to keep yourself exceptionally busy because I know that you have still been hitting the bike quite a lot is that right <laughs> <laughs> yeah I have we're also doing a house renovation so I'm not even living at my house at the moment but that's kept me really busy as well trying to plan everything and keep everything in order um, there to try and get back in with a few weeks to go before the baby arrives but in terms of yeah cycling I've been really really lucky I've been able to cycle throughout I'm still riding now probably at least five times a week uh, mostly on Zwift so the online cycling platform where you can basically ride your own bike um, which is connected to a turbo trainer um, and then you essentially watch a screen you can do different workouts ride with different people from all over the world and I've also actually um, worked with Zwift to create a 12-week prenatal workout series for women which is just started and going really well so yeah Amazing. I've been really lucky I've only been riding about 30 to 40 minutes at a time but again it's just been so good for me physically and mentally um, throughout the pregnancy and with COVID to have structure in my day as well I find that exercise just really helps me um, almost tick it off the list of the day and I just feel so good for it um, so yeah I've been super super lucky but again just trying to encourage women um, who are pregnant to, to try and stay as active as possible because I've just reaped the benefits of it and I'd love to you know share that with other women so they can feel good too. Yeah that's such an important message because there's there's amazing um infographic that's kind of popping up everywhere now from the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists which talks about exercise and pregnancy but I don't really think until then there's been much to promote it in um, amongst pregnant women which seems crazy given the amazing benefits which we know there is and they recommend a minimum of 150 uh, 50 minutes not hours of moderate intensity exercise per week in pregnancy which I suspect for lots of people 
they aren't quite getting. I know for yourself, you absolutely will be. But I just wonder kind of what, what your experience was as a pregnant lady and especially someone who was also an athlete in terms of getting information about what you should do, what you can do um, and what perhaps you should sort of steer clear of in pregnancy. Was there much there for you? Um, not really um, to be honest it was quite hard to get any information and I was sort of messaging other athletes that I knew um, who had gone through pregnancy whilst whilst training essentially um, to ask their advice because there wasn't much out there for especially for I guess ex-athletes or people that were super active um, going into pregnancy and I think there's this I guess an old-fashioned um yeah understanding or maybe not understanding um myth, misconception yeah <laughs> yeah misconception that's exactly the word I was looking for um that you know when you're pregnant that you should just be doing nothing um and I had a few comments you know at the start it was nice you know just you be careful and um don't do too much but there's been a few times where I've actually been stopped on the street um I've been getting on my bike just on a mountain bike, going to, you know, through a park on a trail um, where people have commented saying, oh, you, you shouldn't really be doing that. And it just blows my mind because, you know, one, I don't think people should comment on, you know, other people. And two, you know, in terms of the health benefits, like you say, of exercise in general, um, it's just been amazing for me. Uh, throughout pregnancy to to be able to carry on so yeah I don't think there's enough information out there as to you know really what you can and can't do through pregnancy I called upon my ex-coach who's a physiologist and a doctor um, and you know just basically asked him what the what the guidelines were and then just try to you know not it's, it's quite hard not to listen to other people because essentially all you all I've wanted for such a long time is this baby and you do start to question yourself whether it is the right thing to do or not but then soon you know you have to you know really think and and just trust that one person I guess that you do trust and listen to other women who have been through it at the at the same time um to know that actually you're you're doing a really good job and and that is the best thing to do and that to listen to your body because I've really learned throughout this pregnancy that you know that's the golden rule just listen to your body it will tell you before you, you you know before you go too hard it will tell you that actually you might have done that's enough for today or you know that's intense that's as intense as you should go and and just you know leave it there um so so yeah that's I guess it's, it's a shame and I'm, I think it's something that do, does need to change going forward and I hope I can be a part of that yeah 100 percent, and that is kind of my biggest passion as a midwife is that gap because the benefits of exercise are just monumentous for all things from physical health mental health helping with preparation for birth and we're just we're just not doing it justice and I don't think we do ourselves justice as women by kind of I guess underestimating the fact that our bodies will be to, to a large extent quite self-limiting when we are performing exercise in pregnancy and it will tell us if something doesn't feel right so even if you've never done any exercise before and you start walking in pregnancy that's absolutely fine you know it's a great time to start exercise even if it's not something you've done prior to pregnancy and just listen to your body if it doesn't feel right then great stop adapt and then you can carry on in, in a different way but there's so much that you can do and I totally appreciate that you've obviously got an amazing athletic history and for you cycling is the equivalent to you breathing it's what you've always done it's what your body knows and it's what makes you feel really great and really powerful but throughout your pregnancy have you found there's been some kind of adaptions that you your body's told you to make and I guess how's that felt because you're used to in your career kind of pushing yourself for pbs and being part of a team where you kind of want to go all out because you don't want to let team members down um, and that's having a really positive ego in kind of getting to where you've got to in your athletic career but has that been kind of a challenge in pregnancy to kind of tail that yeah, definitely. Um, so on Zwift, which is the online cycling platform that I use, the workouts, they're all tailored to your FTP, which is your functional threshold power. And 
it's incredible the difference now um for example what i used to be able to average in terms of watts or power on the bike for three hours at a time now i'm not even doing for a minute so it's i really really had to adapt um and you know these the the powers i'm doing i i could have done with one leg with my eyes closed you know singing before and now that's that's actually quite a challenge for me i think I've just had to really embrace it. And I think with cycling, that is probably the hardest part because I've got that direct comparison with running. Um, I started when I was, I, when I first got pregnant, I was running quite a lot as well. Um, but that got harder a lot quicker because my body wasn't used to it. So I started to adapt quicker than I did on the bike. So I was doing stop, start running. I was walking in between, um, doing less distance. Again, just listening to my body. But yeah, with cycling, I guess it's been quite hard in a sense. But then also, you know, you have then just got to remember, well, actually, you're growing a baby as well. And that is why, you know, and just trying to be kind to yourself, um, I guess. There's a big thing actually going around today um, like about, you know, a challenge accepted, I think it's called on Instagram about, you know, women empowering each other. And it's. I think it's just important to, I guess, when I'm on the bike and I'm thinking, oh, my, I could do, I could have done so much more than this, you know, a couple of years ago and how unfit I am. But actually, it's incredible what our bodies do. Um, and it's trying to just remember that before you beat yourself up and just be grateful. I think I'm just really grateful that I can still do it because I know a lot of women, whether they want to or not, just can't because they suffer with different things throughout pregnancy which just means they purely cannot exercise whether they want to or not so I think you know it's trying to be grateful that actually you still feel great and you've only got a few weeks to go definitely and it's it's always going to be hard for us to tell but I suppose the fact that you were so physically fit and healthy and strong prior to you getting pregnant has only gonna help your kind of pregnancy symptoms I suppose and kind of hopefully prevent you having some of those kind of muscle aches and pains that you might have otherwise if your body had had some other weaknesses but I think it's it's a challenge sometimes isn't it for us to change our approach to exercise and our goals because your your body's going to change so your aesthetics are going to be changing and that's inevitable so we have to accept that in pregnancy and accepting the fact that you're not going to get a PB and kind of I guess reframing the reasons for you exercising in terms of the health of you and your baby and your preparation for birth and labor. Um, and I think, yeah, it's cha changing that focus definitely is really important, but something that can, can definitely be a challenge, especially when you've competed at the level that you have in the past. Yeah, absolutely. And a big thing for me was weight gain in cycling, especially in road cycling, um, which is what I was doing for the last few years of my career it's all about being as light but as powerful as you can be so you know if you were to step on the scales and you know you've lost weight it's, it's it's a good thing and that was you know what was drummed into my head for so long and I think now I, I found it not hard but different you know putting on that weight um and trying to just accept that you know because before you know putting on weight was deemed as a negative um, so it's just trying to change that mentality that it's a good thing to be putting on weight and okay yeah maybe not excessive weight and you know not eating for two and just trying to stay as healthy as you possibly can um, in terms of your diet but at the same time you're growing a baby so of course you're going to put on weight and that's a really good thing and you know a really healthy thing as well so that's something else I've had to sort of try and accept on the way where as before being an athlete you know you I think all or most athletes do have um not a problem with not a problem with weight but you know it's so much about you know your strength and your body image and getting that extra power out which might mean dropping a couple of kilos or whatever um for so long that now it's like wow I've never been this heavy but you're pregnant so yeah yeah <laughs> that's yeah. why so it's um yeah it's quite a lot of change and then your body as well obviously um you know it's just changing so much and it's accepting that and just being kind kind to yourself and I think I've got I'm gonna have to 
really think about that post baby as well because I'm not just going to bounce straight back to what I was you know before um let's just give myself that time yeah that's a really great point that you raise though Danny about the kind of weight gain of pregnancy and the kind of body image um side to it because I think for women regardless I suppose of your history and background the media and social media and like the pressures to look a certain way or to to weigh a certain amount is just enormous and you it's kind of unavoidable in so many aspects of life and in pregnancy like you say it's going to happen you're growing a baby you've got an enlarging uterus you know you've got a placenta growing you've got all this water your body is naturally putting on fat stores to to help you to grow your baby and to um, breastfeed and things afterwards so it's completely inevitable and so I think it's really important that we we kind of recognize that that's going to happen and work to accept it and then kind of just move on and sideline it because if it's going to if if weighing yourself in pregnancy for example is going to give you any negative emotions then don't bother just eat a nourishing healthy food move your body do what feels good and just focus your energy on stuff that's so much more important than than the, how the scale kind of fluctuates during your pregnancy because like you say you're growing another human being And it's such a powerful time to influence your baby's health. It's not a time to be kind of restricting your energy intake. Yeah, absolutely. And especially for me where I am, you know, doing quite a bit of exercise still. Um, And that was one thing Laura Kenny actually said to me, you know, you can still exercise, of course, but just make sure you're fueling really, really well um, because, you know, you're using energy to grow the baby as well as, um, you know you are on the bike or running or or whatever so I'm really conscious of that and yeah like you say um for other people if if getting on the scales is gonna you know upset you then don't even bother because it's not worth it what is the point um so yeah no I I totally totally agree with you um on that one yeah it's a difficult one in society isn't it but yeah definitely I think people like you speaking out because you're a strong athlete and an empowered woman so for people to hear that actually it's it's something that crosses most women's minds is is really useful and hopefully we can move away from the kind of negative connotation that's kind of associated I suppose and then in your kind of training during pregnancy were there kind of any main challenges that you kind of face in terms of your adaption or I guess I guess um maybe mentally as well kind of any challenges towards it um I think just again like we've just touched upon changing my my goals and outlook and why I was training so now I'm not training to become fitter I'm just training to sort of maintain an active lifestyle um there's no kind of real you know physical goals for me to hit it's just when I feel good try and do some exercise when you can again like you say I've been only doing about 30 to 40 minutes on the bike most days coupled with maybe a walk half an hour to an hour in the afternoon we've been lucky with the weather that it's been good so it's been nice to get outside Um, and then in terms of other adaptations um, I've got a pregnancy belt like um, and that's really helped with my pelvis Um, I was really kindly gifted some maternity wear from Fit and Mama, which is, I think, the only um, fitness sort of maternity brand where they actually did scientific testing for their top, which basically reduces the bump movement by something like 40%. Um, So that was really good. I found that really, um, really useful. So just adaptions in terms of finding good kit that you feel comfortable in. I've been using my husband's cycling shorts because they're obviously a lot bigger and they're a lot comfier for my bump. Changing the um the bike setup so that my arms can come higher so my bump's not as squished um basically. Um I'm just trying to think what else. Yeah, I don't think much else. Obviously, then just the intensity of workouts is is a lot less. I still do structured workouts, so I'm still doing sort of interval work, but the intensity of the intervals is, is a lot lower. It's just something that I find a lot easier. I'd I'd rather have sort of a structure to what I'm doing rather than just simply riding. Um, so I've just been doing that. 
um I think that's something that's been really great in lockdown actually is that there's so many people that are putting resources out like even free resources on YouTube and social media so there's literally so much material that you could be following like even videos in your living room there's so much available now like more than ever so it's great that people can hopefully embrace those yeah definitely my friend um Alex who runs Yogability online she's just started um yoga for for specifically for for pregnancy and I tried a couple of those sessions and they're fantastic and like you said at the start you know there's no reason why women who aren't active before they become pregnant try things like that you know just moving stretching um you know it's going to be it's going to be beneficial because I have had days where my back is really really sore and I do get those aches and pains but actually I feel that you know, exercise actually makes it better. Um, and I think a lot of people would be scared to exercise if they're aching because they would feel that it's only going to make it worse when actually half of the time it makes it better because, you know, you're getting that blood flowing, you're warming up your muscles, you're giving them a good stretch. Um, so yeah, it's just, again, I can't preach about it enough. I just love it. Yeah. hundred percent. And interesting that you said about, um, Alex's pregnancy yogability, cause she's actually on episode two of the podcast, um, talking oh, all about it. Yes. Yeah, so if anyone wants to hear any, <laughs> any more about that, it, Alex's concept is fantastic because it's, it's kind of take some of the aspects of conventional yoga, but it's got much more of a mobility and kind of active element to it. So it's kind of She says yoga without the Zen and it's kind of exactly that, isn't it? There's a bit more movement and a bit more kind of mobility and strength work than you might get from like a conventional yoga class, which is great for pregnancy. When you think about the positions that women get into for like labor and birth, if you can have like a great strong foundation to your body and kind of great flexibility and and endurance, which you'll be amazing at, then it's only going to kind of really help with that labor and birth process yeah she's absolutely amazing um I was doing her yoga ability classes when I was still competing um you know she's comes from a rugby background she's a rugby player herself a lot of the men's rugby teams join her classes and she's so strong she's probably the strongest female I know to be honest and um yeah it's been fantastic for me to be able to take part in her sessions you know before I was pregnant and now I'm so chuffed that she's doing some pregnancy specific yoga ability um so yeah that like you say there's just so many more resources now for people out there there's not really an excuse not to not to stay you know active yeah definitely and those those kind of aches and pains so one of the common things obviously synthesis pubis dis- disorder or it's sometimes called pelvic girdle pain spd really common in pregnancy that kind of extra movement that you've got in your um joints and your pelvis is moving a little bit more and the idea is that helps facilitate the birth of your baby so that's fantastic and it's really helpful and our hormones are great for that but for a lot of women that excess mobility does cause pain and movement and light exercise perhaps not high impact things like running and jumping but certainly swimming walking cycling pilates and yoga is massively beneficial so i would encourage any women who are getting those kind of back aches or pelvic aches and pains try some gentle exercise because it really can be a game changer to kind of getting you through those symptoms and i know you said that you got some um, pelvic pain was it with running initially so you kind of tailed that back but you've been okay with cycling yeah i had it really badly actually um when i was running when I got to sort of the middle of my pregnancy so from about 20 weeks when I was running and it was just yeah actually it was when I stopped running so I was running I'd be fine and then I'd stop and it would just be really painful for the rest of the day and maybe the day after and it got to the point for me where it running just wasn't worth it um when I knew I could cycle and since I've stopped running and I'm still doing everything else I can still walk you know well up to an hour at a time I actually did a 10k walk a couple of weeks ago which was absolutely fine I didn't get any sort of pelvic pain after after that and still cycling so like you say there's so much you still can do um even if you are suffering from um you know bits of pelvic pain I guess um like you said just avoid the really high impact sort of stuff because that's what really does put a strain 
on your pelvis if you're prone to that I guess not everyone would would suffer with it um I follow quite a lot of girls on Instagram who are still running and that's that's great but there are so many different options so again it's about finding I guess what works for you and adapting throughout your pregnancy um so that you don't ever have to stop entirely yeah definitely because what feels good one day might not feel quite so good the next day and every movement that you do be it running or cycling or or even like a squat movement or or a burpee there is modification so whether that's kind of that you don't jump after your burpee or you squat to it onto a box at a lower depth there's all sorts of things and then obviously reducing your intensity of cardiovascular kind of exercise there's so much adaption that you can do so it's just getting out there and doing it and we really need to kind of raise raise the voices of people that are successfully doing it and the benefits that they're feeling and having had a pregnancy in COVID-19 sort of scenario and lockdown how have you found that kind of psychologically and emotionally I suppose how has exercise kind of helped you in that aspect because it's been a massively anxiety provoking time for everybody but definitely for pregnant ladies that's been amplified yeah massively um I think at the beginning of COVID it was really worrying we were put into the sort of vulnerable category and that we should be shielding and you know like you say it's a scary time for everyone um but it being able to exercise again has really helped from so many different angles I think obviously now everyone um well should know how beneficial being healthier having a healthier body is to reducing your likelihood of not catching COVID necessarily but then your um your symptoms or how severe you actually get the get the virus and I know again there are some anomalies with people without underlying health conditions and who, who aren't overweight still you know um suffering badly but the overriding message is that if you are overweight um and you're diabetic um you are more likely to to suffer worse with with it and I think that's it, it that's a case for all um sort of viruses I guess I'm so so lucky that I I barely get ill and I put that down to you know leading a super healthy active lifestyle um you enjoy your food more you sleep better like I was saying before and it just it helps so much with your mental well-being for me with Covid uh it gave me something to do in the day it gave me a structure um you know it's something to tick off your box of the day right get my exercise done you just I just feel better for for doing it every single day um I think so many more people can can benefit from it who don't even know how good they can feel and I think that's a sad thing I don't think people actually realize how good they can feel and it's great that the government actually have actually just launched a, an initiative to try and prescribe cycling actually um as a means to yeah doctors to prescribe cycling to help with um you know different different um illnesses or you know just to get people more active so i think that's fantastic and hopefully the infrastructure of the roads will will get better as well i know they're pumping i think about 250 million into the into the UK for cycling infrastructure which is great because I think a lot of people think or feel that they're not safe on the road which I totally get I totally get it if you're not a cyclist you would feel um scared on the road so that's fantastic as well so yeah it's just again it's just really helped me through this weird pandemic um that that we're in at the moment um but I know it will help me you know, all the way through my life as well as it has done for the past 29 years. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it's certainly, it's certainly been an incredible, an incredible journey for you with, with your cycling. It's, it's amazing, super inspirational. And I wonder, Danny, have you got any kind of, I know this probably feels like maybe a little way, way off or maybe it doesn't, but in the kind of postpartum period, have you got any kind of visions or plans for how you're going to, I guess it's, I guess it's not return to exercise in a way because you've been doing it throughout, but how you're going to kind of 
do do fit exercise into postpartum and whether you've got a kind of structure that you plan to follow um no I don't think I'm gonna have a structure but I think I'm just gonna really really be kind to myself and listen to my body and just do what I feel will be beneficial for yeah my body and my mind if I want to if I fancy going out for a walk a few days after obviously depending on what sort of birth I have and how I do recover and how I feel then um I'll definitely do that and I know you know there's there's different there are guidelines on returning to um returning to exercise to do with you know your ab separation that you get when you're pregnant and and you know not doing things like sit-ups and things and I guess yeah running is probably something that I will definitely give myself a good break in terms of coming back to um but again with cycling <laughs> depending on how I recover what sort of birth I have um I'll just kind of see how it goes I don't know you know it's just such an un- unknown world for me I know my world's going to just flip upside down with a baby so I feel that I don't want to plan too much in terms of how and when I'm going to get back to exercise because I don't want to put that expectation on myself either because I think if I did if I was to you know try and come up with some perfect plan and if, if it did didn't quite go to plan then that would almost be detrimental to me so I think yeah like I said just listen to my body see how I feel um, and get back to it as soon as I can we're lucky we've got um, a setup in the house so I'm hoping to be able to to jump on when I can even you know like you said like I said before even if it's for 20 minutes half an hour at a time um, I think it would just do me the world of good even if I am very much sleep deprived um, <laughs> so yeah we'll see but yeah I'm I'm looking forward to to it it will be a bit of a challenge but it's one that I'm looking forward to because again I know as soon as I can get back to it I'll feel I'll feel much better I've definitely got visions of you on like a static (laughs) bike with your baby on the floor (laughs) that's definitely gonna feature in your life I think (laughs) I think so but actually it's interesting we talk about the sleep deprivation but actually exercise can be really kind of energizing as I mean you're not going to be able to push your body to the limits that you would have on a good night's sleep but those short bursts of physical activity can be so like mood boosting and energizing so actually it'll probably fit in quite nicely yeah and I had that today actually so I felt awful this morning I woke up and I just felt so tired and I kept yawning um but I had one of my prenatal Zwift live workouts to do where other women join me um so it wasn't something that I could just get out of and you know what after now I feel a hundred times better a lot more energized less tired um so yeah exactly hopefully it will be be like that post-birth as well and I think that's another misconception almost like the aches and pains where people think I'm so I can't do it I'm so tired I can't possibly then exercise it will make me feel worse but actually if it's only like my workout was today 40 minutes not too intense then probably most of the time you'll actually feel better and um, you'll feel better after and you'll have more energy so that's something that I need to remember I think for <laughs> when I do have a baby and, I all night. <laughs> and I think it links in as well if you are moving your body and feeling good in that aspect then you kind of tend to nourish your body in a more productive way as well don't you, you tend to stay away from the kind of maybe more processed and less nutritious foods I don't like the connotation of good and bad but you do tend to just eat in a more nourishing way because you're kind of thinking well my body performed in this way so I need to fuel it in in the right way as well yeah and I've been quite lucky I think generally I've had a pretty good diet throughout my pregnancy um in the early days I had a few weeks craving of crisps and you know don't get me wrong I I do eat what well yeah again bad food or processed food but 90% of the time I do eat super super healthy and yeah I do think it helps when you do exercise you want to fuel well before and after to to get even more from it again again I'm not exercising to get fitter as such but you're going to feel better I know the benefits of healthy eating as well as exercise and I know that I'll feel better in myself for eating healthier I might crave a I don't know crisps and chocolate and stuff actually I'll, I'll feel better by eating something a bit healthier after um so just balance I think is just the key 
Yeah, definitely. And I think sometimes we really overcomplicate things, don't we? And it's actually like, let's just strip it down to the basics. What what does our body actually need? I think we can definitely over overthink things and overcomplicate things for sure. Yeah, definitely. And as when we spoke about kind of, I guess, the, the postnatal return to exercise, I wonder whether you've had any kind of interaction with like a women's health or like a pelvic health physio during your previous like athletic training and whether that's something you were looking into in the postpartum in terms of kind of, I guess, optimizing your pelvic health before you start kind of the more, the more physically demanding exercise. No, I haven't actually. It's quite interesting that you say that because I didn't even know it was a thing really for after. Um, so yeah, no, it's something that I should probably definitely um, look into. Um, yeah, I think especially when you're to keen to get back to exercise quite soon, which I'm sure you will be as soon as your body feels and you feel like you, you kind of can. Um, and what, what they kind of do is they give like, have like an appointment with you so I don't know how things are working with COVID but they can assess how your pelvic floor is functioning currently um because for lots of people it's it's either too tight or too weak and and they can make kind of an individualized plan for you to optimize the health of your pelvic muscles before you then start putting impact on them and I guess that can kind of help for lots of women those like hiccups later on if they start getting some some symptoms or some issues so it can sometimes make your journey back into your physical activity a little bit smoother <laughs> which is always a beneficial oh, yeah, no, that's definitely something I need to do a bit of research on I think I think that would be yeah really really beneficial yeah yeah no they are they are really awesome especially for women who are really physically active like yourself they can be a huge help which is always always great and then I wonder Danny you've obviously been on like a a massive journey in terms of your training for all of your competitions and and like Olympic games like we're talking top level but I wonder whether your pregnancy journey is kind of compared to that in any way because I often think of I guess childbirth like a marathon this is probably partly because I'm a runner and kind of pregnancy as almost training for that marathon And yet when we, if we were to sign up to a marathon, we would put in this massive training plan. What we definitely wouldn't do is sit on the sofa for nine months. And yet lots of women seem to think, right, I'm pregnant and I've just got to relax. And actually your body's about to go through this like monumentous thing of labor and birth. What can we do to help prepare it? And I just wonder whether you've kind of thought of your pregnancy journey in that way at all. Yeah, I have. And I think it's from not just an active point of view, but from doing, you know, research and reading as much as I can and trying to get prepared. I think as an athlete, you're normally so organized and you almost have, you know, a calendar of a year and every single day is ticked off in terms of what you're going to do to get to that end goal in as best shape as you can. So yeah, I guess probably without really noticing, I've been doing the same as what I've always sort of lived by in that sense. So just trying to be as prepared as possible and make sure you know again in terms of my body I was always going to try and stay as active as possible and I know that that's going to just help me so much in um yeah in childbirth exactly I know that it's going to be really really hard um and then I think mentally as well I'll use a lot of the um a lot of the I guess tips or a lot of the mental processes that I did with my cycling to try and get through it um a lot of people said to me you know that have given birth it is it's like intervals so you know even in the latest later parts of of childbirth yes the contractions are going to get more intense and more frequent but you will get small bits of rest and it's just knowing that almost like I do in my cycling or or whatever exercise it might be you know yeah it really really hurts now but it won't in a minute so just sort of keep going um and that there is an end goal to it and I I just try to think you know every time I do think about I guess the childbirth that this is what we are made to do women were made to to birth babies essentially so our bodies and they, they know what they're doing um to try not to be to be scared about it and yeah I'm I'm lucky because that's one thing I haven't been you know scared about the birthing process and just trying to do everything I can to put myself in the best position I can really to hopefully 
it go okay and you know I know there's so many bumps along the road that you can't control and again trying to be open about those as well that you might not have a perfect birth and everyone's birth is so different and you hear horror stories and you know whether it's about induction or you know um, assisted deliveries and emergency c-sections but again to just trust the professionals in that sense and try and get through it as personally um, as best you can I guess from a mental point of view um, rather than I don't know I guess breaking down in the process or really struggling mentally through it as well if it doesn't quite go to your perfect plan yeah definitely I think that's such a valid point and I'm really enthusiastic about the idea that just because your birth doesn't fit in a certain box that perhaps you thought it might or that society thinks is the best way that doesn't mean it doesn't have to be a positive it can still be a really positive and a really empowering experience so whether you have a water birth with hypnobirthing techniques or you have an emergency cesarean section you should always still feel in control of that experience Um, and there's so many things that Um, you can do to still make yourself feel in control and actually all the decisions that are being made are about your body and your baby so you will always have the final say and I think it's really important that women recognize that there is loads of twists and turns for labor um, and all the things you're doing in terms of your physical activity is only going to optimize your body's position when when you start to go into labor and hopefully that'll be a nice straightforward and uncomplicated experience but if there are twists and turns that doesn't mean that it's not a positive a positive positive birth experience for you yeah absolutely and that's the one thing that I've been quite set on the whole way you know, I've got my ideal birth plan, but again, I'm very much um, in the mindset of, okay, this is my plan A, but it could be plan B, C, D, E, F. And I would still be happy with that um, because I'm well aware that there is, it's almost no such thing as a perfect birth. But again, like you say, it doesn't matter what sort of birth you have. It can always be a positive one and a positive experience depending on your own mindset. It's almost like setbacks in sport. It's how you deal with them, which is how you're going to come out of them, if that makes sense. So, you know, it's losing a race, for example. You know, what can you take out of that um, and learn for, for for the next time? And um trying to bounce back from different things through sport uh, and positively prepare yourself for for anything that could happen I think you've definitely got like the the best experience to kind of take you in as a comparison it's almost a shame that you I mean maybe you can I suppose but it's a shame that you can't labor on your bike you know like in your gym (laughs) setup and you're like right interval one let's go and then you have your rest like it'd be brilliant you could hydrate and and have all your snacks that you would usually have cycling I mean it'd be perfect wouldn't it (laughs) let's hound on the floor (laughs) do we get a baby at the end yeah I love it (laughs) Brilliant. So Danny, everyone that comes on the podcast, I always ask for three top tips. So I wonder whether you could give us your kind of three top tips for pregnant women on how they can stay active during pregnancy. Okay, that's it. Oh, I like one. to throw people on the spot at this point. Yeah, you have. <laughs> um, I, I think golden rule, listen to your body. Number two, you can do more than you think you can. And number three, oh, um, listen to your body. You can do more than you think you can. And oh, I guess, yeah, think of it as a, a training plan, essentially. You are getting ready for, for that big big day that that big race your olympic final um in whatever sport that you want to think of it as that you're going to be yeah that is your olympic final giving birth to your baby so think of it as nine ten months whatever you want to think of it as um to to get yourself in the best shape possible to to have the most positive empowering birth that you can i love that i love that Thank you so much, Danny. And I wish you all the best on your 
journey forward into motherhood and I hope everything goes beautifully for you and if you do fancy giving birth on your bike I'm sure the hospital will be very accommodating (laughs) thanks for having me all right take care catch you soon